Dr. Hassan. This is Adrian from Safety. I was just calling about Norm Salem that we just got up in the 513. I'm just calling because I'm a little concerned. He came up. He's tachycardic and hypotensive. His labs just came back. His hemoglobin 6.2. He's having some bloody bowel movements and he's a little tachypnic at 28. Um, I just wonder if you could come up and take a look at him, see what you want to do. All right, you're on your way up. Thanks. I'll see you soon. Bye. Mr. Norm, he's had to go up on his pressures. He's on Levofed now. Blood pressure is still low. He's had some more bloody bowel movements. I don't know if you want to give him some blood products or? Yeah, let's do another two weeks of blood products. Okay. Do you know how many blood products you want to give? We'll do two years. Okay. All right, guys. So the binding that the emergency release can be found in the level one. The level one can be found on sick view, which is right in front of the nurse's station. So it's in the binder. They're different colors. And I'll bring you over here to the so in the back of the binder, it's in the little clear thing labeled on the form. There's different things you can fill out, patient name, medical record number, the wristband number is the BN number, and then you can put a patient sticker. Underneath it is where you can order the blood products. So Dr. Hassan had said two units of packed red blood cells. You can order, also order platelets, FFP, or cryo. So it's not just packed red blood cells that you can order. If they wanted to go straight to MTP, you could do it through this form also and skip the emergency release. And then he would have to sign it date and time. After this, if they wanted to keep going with blood products, that they're saying you have to order more blood products or you would initiate MTP. Okay. So just keep that. After the form is filled out, you come over to the secretary and you'll give it to the secretary. This is Mary. And after the form is filled out, you'll have Mary call blood bank. When, blood, when she calls blood bank, she will let them know who the physician is and that they want two units of emergency release. You can call blood bank at 222-63. Hi, this is Mary from SICU. I'm calling for an emergency release of blood for Norman Saline in room 513. His MRN is 123456. Dr. Hassan is the ordering physician of two units of blood. Okay, thank you. And then after that, there are orange cards found in the binder, and you can have, we'll ask Mary to fill out with just one sticker and put the BN number on it, just in case there's more blood, so there's at least one there sitting, so it's prepared just in case they need more. Yes. MRI number 123, 4, 5, 6, 7, first band BN, 1234, 2, two units of red cells. Yeah. Here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too. All right, guys. So right now we know that our patient's going to need blood. He's hemoglobin 6.2. We already called and got our emergency release forms. And our secretary is going down to the lab and get it right now. So while we wait for them, there's a couple things we can do. We can set up our ranger. So this is the packaging that it comes in. It's in the bedroom. It's in by the carts where the respiratory stuff is at the bottom. So the biggest point with this is when you get the cassette out, which looks like this, is not to prime it before you put it inside the ranger. If you do that, you're never gonna get this to fit in there and it's just a waste at that point. So, this is the ranger. So you'll take your fluids that you want warmed Remember, as you do this, if your patient has a temp, it's probably not the best idea to warm your fluids. Blood can go through this also. You can also bolus fluids, bolus your blood through this too. All Some of the biggest mistakes that I think everybody makes too is that you get it all primed, you get everything ready, but nobody actually turns it on. So make sure that everything is plugged in. And you're gonna flip the switch. So it takes a minute to prime. Right here is the screen that tells you your temp and it shows you that it's warm enough. After you work your way through, you're going to fill this whole chamber up with fluids.
ready to go. And then it has a port too. So if you need to give meds, if you need to do anything, you can also use this port too. And then you're all set to hook up to your patient. This is the patient nurse. Her job is to draw a pink top tube to send to the blood bank right away. Patient care, titrating drips, administering medications as needed, monitoring the patient, assisting the physicians with procedures and setup equipment. Dr. Hassan, I need you to come in and assess the patient a little more. He's Hello. getting worse. Hi, Dr. Hassan. He's now on Lingo and, and Gatis are empty and made, so he's losing more his LG to putting out some bloody drainage now. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to have to call my attending and I'll do it on the screen. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Hello, doctor. Well, I'm calling about the patient in room 513, uh, normal saline. His uh, status has been worsening. He's currently on lethal and vasopressin, and uh, he, we're noticing more blood coming up from his OG tube. Uh, could you please come and assess the patient? Yes, thank you. In order to have a massive transfusion protocol ordered, you must contact your intensivist, trauma surgeon, anesthesiologist, or OB physician. It can be done via telephone, does not need to be at bedside to order an MTP. But if, the pa if they are in the house, it is wise to have them come and physically assess the patient. Hi, Dr. Hassan. Hey, what's going on? I understand uh, your patient is still tachycardic and hypotensive. Yeah. Yeah. Has received some transfusion? Uh, yes, two units. Two units? And he's vasopressing more bloody output now. MSS and on top of bloody vomit. Okay. Yes. I agree. I think we should uh, institute the massive transfusion protocol. Okay, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mary, we're going to turn that emergency release on Norman Saley into a massive transfusion protocol. Can you call lab and notify them and then page the operator to page it overhead? Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm this calling. is the secretary of the unit. Their roles and responsibilities include calling to notify blood bank when initiating the MTP, calling the operator to page out an emergency release or MTP, calling the unit management to notify them. She should stay at the desk on the unit to answer phone calls, make pages, facilitate communication, and answer call lights. If there is no secretary assigned to the unit, then you will have to fulfill this role by another staff member. I'm calling Blood Bank at 22263. Hi, this is Mary from SICU. I need to initiate the massive transfusion protocol for Norman Saline in room 513. Thank you. I'm calling the operator, the emergency line 888. Hi, can you please page out the emergency massive transfusion protocol? Thank you. Hi, Catherine. We're gonna initiate that massive transfusion protocol for room 513. I'm calling to let you know. Thank you, goodbye. Terry, I'm calling to let you know that we're initiating an MTP on 513. Thank you, goodbye. Answer call lights as needed. Stay at the desk. This is the coordinator. She is assigned by usually being the charge of the unit that has the massive transfusion on it. She will refer to the protocol to maintain the one-to-one -one ratio, assign the roll cards, the gatekeeper and stand at the doorway, facilitate and communicator not involved in patient care. She will control the environment, avoid doing direct patient care, and she will complete the massive transfusion record and turn into the uh, SICU assistant manager, Catherine. Okay guys, here are your roll cards. You're the patient nurse. Don't forget to get your pink top too. Okay. You are the documenter and you will be the blood nurse. All right. Hi Regina, we've called a MTP. I'm gonna give you this. This is a card that says you're the house supervisor and on the back are your duties that you need to do as the house supervisor. Okay, thank you. This is the house supervisor. Her uh, roles and responsibilities are to find resources to complete the team. The, I, the runner, ICURNs, assist, nursing assistants, people to help run the floor. 
if this uh, MTP is on the MICU, her job will also to be to call the surgical ICU to bring up the level one infuser. She is also the family liaison, crowd control, or to call security to help assist, should be running between the nursing desk and room, ensure all needs are met, and help run for equipment, supplies, or met into the med room. Okay, are you guys ready for um, a runner to start bringing up the blood for you? Yes, we do, we need a runner. Okay, I'm gonna call fourth floor and ask them to send up. Hi, this is Regina, the nursing supervisor. Could you please send up your nursing assistant to room 513? We have an MTP in progress and we need a runner for the blood. Thank you, they'll be right up. The emergency blood runner is usually the nursing assistant or someone on the unit that is available to go to the lab quickly to obtain the blood cooler. Responsibilities include communicate the phone number with lab, secretary, and the coordinator, use the priority button on the elevator or take the stairs, bring emergency release form or patient identification card, the orange cooler card, with the patient's MRN number and BN number on, um, on the form. Continue to go back to the lab to obtain a new cooler and return the last cooler. The emergency release, uh, the emergency blood runner should be moving quickly during this process. Hi there, I'm Jennifer. I'm from Surgical ICU. I have some blood for a massive transfusion. All right. So this for a normal LC saline yes. um, MR number, 123567. Yes. Um, location of ICU, P number BN, 12345, J. Yes. And yes. you're getting three red cells, three plasmas, and one playlist. Okay, great. Thank you very That's much. That. Thank yep. you. This is the documenter. They can either be an ICU or IMC RN. Their job is to document on the massive transfusion record and assist the transfusing RN with checking and verifying the blood. This is the level one infuser blood RN. This can be one or two RNs. This should be an ICU RN who will be transfusing the blood slash administering boluses, run the level one rapid transfuser, fuser, troubleshoot lines, and call out when each unit is started and stopped. Okay, so this is our uh, level one massive transfuser. Um, the blood RN is gonna be getting this up um, while the blood runner is downstairs um, getting the, you know, the emergency blood. So the first thing you want to do is obviously make sure the machine is plugged in. Um, back here is where you're going to find the tubing for the, this machine. You don't need any extra like filters or anything like that like you do with like um, infusing blood on a pump. Um, it already is like built in here. So on the back of these it kind of gives you step by step instructions. Um, about what it, the tubing should look like, and then how one, two, three, four, the different steps on here, and they're labeled on the machine. So um, if you're waiting for the blood runner to come up to return back to SICU, and the physician orders like LR or normal saline or you know any kind of fluid, obviously, to um, infuse, you can do that while you're waiting for the blood as long as the physician orders it. Um, so right now we have a bag of blood, and then we have um, a bag of normal saline. So we're gonna open up our kit. Very nice and neat in there, usually. Um, it's pretty, it's impossible to load the machine upside down because you have to swipe both bags. Um, so what you're gonna do is put this into the level one um, before you swipe your bags. You'll see, um, goes in order one, two, and then there's three down here, and four. So it's exactly like in chronolo chronological order of how you're going to swipe it. Or load the machine, rather. So put this in this little guy right here. This needs to be seated in here correctly. You have to push it kind of hard. And then this needs to be pulled down to seat it, and it's kind of hard to do. This isn't seated correctly, the machine isn't going to work. Um, and then down here, here we can actually put these. 
Okay, so they're not touching the ground while you're trying to load this machine. This door opens down and then up and then down. Um, bigger tubing, I'm sorry. Close this door. And then you just seat this correctly in there as well. I want to make sure that it's not like clamped, but there's a little notch right here to allow this tubing to not be like pinched off by that corner at like a 90 degree angle. So don't let your tubing dangle on the floor, even if there's a cap on it. And then you're going to go ahead and spike your bags. You want to prime this whole system and get all the air out of it and everything before you turn the um, transfuser on. We're going to get a lot of alarms. It's going to be a very stressful situation as it is. So then you're just going to go ahead and spike like normal. Inside of here, um, there's different hangers for different type of, uh, different sizes of bags rather, like a liter, and then you have these different levels. So if you try and hang um, a liter bag on this low uh, clip in here, you're gonna pinch off the drip chamber and it's not gonna flow, so. And this is a 500cc bag. And then once you close it, you want to make sure that you're not occluding this chamber or um, like pinching anything off as to where it won't be able to run. And then you're going to spike your other bag. In this case, it's blood. Spiking your bag of blood. Hanging it the same way. Um, and then you're going to, the next thing you do is prime um each bag you're going to want to make sure that the clamp leading to the rest of the circuit so this clamps here this clamps here this clamp controls anything below that you want to prime this drip chamber like halfway you don't want to prime it all the way ideally because you want to be able to see the flow of fluids um, and that your machine is running correctly um and you're going to basically prime from here over here into this drip chamber skipping this part right now so you're going to unclamp here unclamp here and you can see it flowing up here. It's just filling up this drip chamber till it's halfway. And then I'll reclamp this one because I'm going to run this bag first. So I'll clamp that one off. And once you're sure that you have everything seated correctly, um, all of your clamps are going to be open because let's see, you're going to prime the rest of the system from this bag. Unclamp here. it's just making its way through you want to make sure all of the air is out of it um, you'll see this fill up to just about the top and it's really important to make sure all the air is out of it for obvious reasons but also because um, this machine will like self clamp if it detects air it will self clamp and you're not going to get any products into the patient at all about good with the air situation. It's like one more little Okay. So once you're sure that you have all the air out, you'll clamp here. And then this is the on button. These are regular alarms, and if the machine is running correctly, um, this green button on top will be um, on the whole time that you're running it. This alarm means that this isn't seated properly. 
Okay, so with the machine off, um, when you do get this alarm, like I said, the second one right here, and you can match up the um, symbols on it, so you know if this is alarming, it's something having to do with number one and two. Um, turn the machine off, reseat it. Uh, sometimes it's just a little bit finicky. And then you wanna make sure that this clamp is open um, when you turn the machine back on. And then it should get those three alarms again like normal. And now it's running with this green light, which means it's okay. Um, after that, you're going to make sure that you look at what lines the patient has. Um, that's appropriate for blood transfusion. Um, if the physician's putting in a line, you can always use an 18 gauge to put in or to infuse the blood. Um, so the last thing that you wanna do is close these. Once it's connected to the patient, um, you're gonna close these. And there's a pillow behind the back of both of these. So there's a positive and negative. And this, um, when you hit positive, it pressurizes the system to basically bolus this bag into the patient. So once the first product is done infusing, um, the blood RN is gonna call out, it's gonna be very loud in the room, so there's a lot of people in the room. Um, it's gonna call out to the documenter that that unit of blood has been completed. Um, you're gonna unpressurize to the negative side, you're gonna clamp, and then you're gonna unclamp your full unit, and then you're gonna pressurize that one. Um, it's going to start running. Like I said, you want to make sure that this drip chamber isn't filled up all the way. So you want to be able to visualize your blood products or your fluid um, infusing. Okay. Um, if you're noticing that your blood is running um, a little bit slower, uh, your system is alarming, you might want to check your filter um, and just check to see that it's, it might be clotted off. We have this new filter that you can swap out um, to make it run better. I talked about earlier um, when you're checking your lines before you start running the uh, level one. Ideally through an 18 gauge if you don't have a cordis. Uh, you can run through a central line but the lumens are so small that the blood is going to get to the patient a lot slower than it would through a larger lumen. Um, typically for an MTP there's already a physician at the bedside uh, placing a cordis and this is going to be the cordis. It's kept over in the line cart. Um, and this indicates that this is the cordis. It says PSI, this little guy right here. This is a nine front, so this allows a large amount of blood to get to the patient quickest. Um, if this is not available, don't wait for the physician to place a cordis if you have an 18. Um, you can massive transfuse through the 18 gauge until this is um, placed in the patient. Okay, so as the documenter, you're helping the blood RN. You're gonna be checking all the units with them, but as they are calling off when they started the units, when they stopped the units, they will be documenting on this paper. This paper you'll be filling out with the name of the patient, the location of it, um, you'll be, or the ordering physician will be on here, and then you'll have all of your coolers on here. So you will list all the blood products that you have given on here. You will list if you didn't give blood products and you had to return them back to blood bank. Um, this is our tool, it's not part of the medical record, it's our tool to fill in notes during the MTP. We still have to fill out all the blood forms that come on the blood products. They all have to be filled out with the time, date, everything like that. Then we have our mass transfusion record. This is going to be filled out by the coordinator. Once this is filled out, it's going to go to the 5ICU ACM cath and PO. Um, this is just gonna help us reflect on the MTP, what we need to work better on, what happened, what we can change and everything like that. Um, that's the main goal is to make sure we have everything documented, time exactly, what blood products we use because then we take it back to the MTP and we um, committee and we talk about what we can do better and what changes and what we use. But that's about it for these.
Adrian, Regina said that the family's on their way in, okay. and did you need anything more from the pharmacy? Um, another basal press and athlete. Okay, all right, I'll let them know. Thank you. Let me know when you guys need that next cooler called for. All right, thank, thank you. you.